so it's a bright but a little windy December morning and me and Ra are off for a bit of a fly and um, there we go because it's windy we'll use the trees he quite likes the trees anyway um, it's his natural environment he's quite happy up there and um, and yeah feels at home it's a nice way to show off their natural abilities and when we have uh, photography days in then it's a really nice way of uh, getting a nice natural looking shot and Rara is quite happy to do it he'll happily sit in those trees and pose for them we do pounces um, nice little gliding flights it's quite maneuverable being a wood owl um, obviously they're designed for woodland environments so they're quite happy to go up and um, and use uh, trees and gaps in trees etc as you can see he looks quite good sat up there I think anyway I'm going to carry on flying him and um, and then uh, we'll uh, sit down with him later and um, talk about a few facts um, about the tawny owls and what they're like and where we get them and what they eat but most importantly Okay, so now that Ra has had his exercise, um, we've got him down here. He's obviously going to be a little bit noisy because he hasn't had his tea yet. Um, but he's had a nice amount of flying, got some exercise, um, had some nice enrichment, been in the trees, um, flown around, seen all the other birds that are around, um, and it's quite a natural life for him. Now, I said that he would um, like the trees because that's his natural environment and these guys are wood owls um, they would typically um, live either in a forest or on the edge of a forest and they're very much like trees um, as their hunting perches rather than things like barn owls that tend to quarter and fly over the tops of the long grasses listening and looking for mice he would much rather be sat in a tree it's really energy efficient because he's not exercising he's not wasting energy he's uh, sort of saving up and, and using it when necessary to chase prey so he will be sat in that tree, and as I said, he'll be looking for mostly rodents, but tawny owls are very, very good hunters, and they're also quite aggressive in the wild, or at least they can be. And so he will hunt anything from um, mice to even insects, um, worms, birds, up to the size of himself. Um, so I'm talking collared doves and possibly even pigeons. Um, they are a very effective hunter, they're quite strong, uh, but they do uh, sort of sneak up and ambush their prey. So anything down on the ground um, that's unawares is fair game for these guys. Now we're sitting here making a noise that you might not be familiar with. Um, when we think of owls, we do have that typical to wit to woo noise in our heads, but actually out of the 200 plus different owl species in the world, the tawny owl is the only one that goes to it to woo. Now, there's a bit of a misconception with TV and cartoons that owls in general make that noise, but it is just these guys. Um, and you'll notice that he's not making it. And the reason is because at the moment, um, he's sitting here, he's sort of announcing the fact that he's about, does anybody want to feed me? That would be quite nice, you know, if you've got a mouse in your pocket. I have, in fact, uh, for him in a second. But um, that's the noise he's making. The to to woo that we hear is a territory call. So quite often people come and they'll say, I hear this owl, it's right outside my bedroom window. Normally because we quite like to put trees outside our bedroom windows um, and that's where he's sitting. 
um, but with his colouring they're really hard to see um, and so you just hear this noise um, and so it's a surprise to people that they are the most common owl in the country a lot more common than barn owls and little owls um, barn owls we tend to see quite a lot um, little owls not so much but by the nature they are quite small and they are tucked away in hedgerows so what's all that flying for in the wild he would be hunting um, and other than hunting and moving from A to B there isn't a lot that they do they're there to hunt they're there to um, to father youngsters um, and that is essentially what they're designed to do and they're, they're very good at doing it um, but that's that's sort of a, their instinct and their nature now here we exercise them um, we demonstrate to people on experience days what they're capable of but also talk about conservation and with owls in particular there's a really really useful uh, sort of thing that they do for conservation and that's they bring up pellets now he'll be hunting um, whatever he eats the fur the feather the bone he can't digest so that has to come up or out in one way or another and owls produce a pellet so all of that food comes up in a little pellet which I have here this is Riles from this morning um, and you can see it's it's quite furry um, it's got little bones in it um, and that is uh, what he'll produce every single morning before breakfast he's got to go out and he's got to uh, produce this pellet now for us it's really useful because we know what he's eaten we can pull these pellets apart and if we're lucky and if it's um not been sort of trodden in or um, you know sometimes the mice will nibble at them because they have still got some bone and protein in them we can pull out bones now this is a jaw uh, of a rat um, we get ribs you get little mice bones um, sometimes even this is a, a much bigger rat from a bigger bird we get full skulls um, and it means we can tell exactly what this bird has been eaten which is really useful if um, you know we notice that in a, a small locality the owl population is going down we can look at the pellets see what they've been eating and quite often the reason that predators decline in numbers is because the prey is declining in numbers but it doesn't just mean you know we need to flood the wildlife with more voles and mice but it's normally habitat loss and um, deforestation and all of the things that unfortunately humans do quite regularly means that their prey goes down or um, what their prey feeds on so the grasses the seeds the, the berries um, you know we've got lots of trees here at the site um, we've recently planting some hazel trees um, for the, the hazelnuts which are brilliant for dormice and field mice um, which obviously these guys would happily eat so even putting one or two trees in your garden is helping the wildlife and in turn you're helping predators um, as well so as i said um i have some mice for him he's done a nice amount of work um, but he has to have a reward he has to get something out of it which he now knows is coming <laughs> as you can see um and it is a very quick process um as i say Tawny owls are quite hard to spot because they're very well camouflaged in the trees. Um, they tend to hunt in the middle of the night and once they've gone down and they've caught their mouse, they eat it very, very quickly. It doesn't take much time to go down. And as soon as he's swallowed that, he will get straight off the floor, back into that tree, either looking around for another one or keeping out of danger because there's lots of things that would potentially eat him uh, you know even foxes domestic cats other birds of prey if you know this is a male tawny owl his females are a, a fair bit bigger if they're not related or if they're not a pair and he's sort of invading her patch or vice versa she would have a go at either stealing that mouse or eating him because it's um a tough world out there for wildlife and so they have to take every opportunity to get their food so Ra's got another mouse, there we go, and it goes down just as quickly as the first one. Now we weigh them every morning, so I know how heavy he is, we give them a nice health check so I know that he's nice and bright and healthy and he's not got any ailments, um, but it means that I know exactly how much food he needs to be healthy and to be um, you know, fit and able and have enough energy to, to fly for the rest of the day or the week. Um, so we know that he is satisfied on two mice. He's also had a few tidbits, as you've seen, as I've been flying him. Um, and now he sits there all nice and fluffed up, very, very happy, um, nice and chilled. He's going to sit there for the rest of the day in the sun and just uh, digest that food. And as I said, bring up a pellet in the morning. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've learned something and enjoyed. Please comment um, if you've got any questions. Happy to answer those.
even in your garden, you can plant things, you can leave a little bit of long grass, um, for example, bird feeders up. That really, really encourage and help a vast amount of wildlife. Check out the website. Um, if you've got any comments, as I said, let us know. Please subscribe and uh, watch the rest of our series of videos on the birds. Thank you very much.